Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us and welcome. This is Alex Sigurist for Pangyo Techno Valley TV. We're here starting the 2021 Pangyo Monthly Online Meetup. Today, it is Pangyo in Korea and Jongguansun in China. We're going to be talking about these two great places, kind of learning a little bit about each other and also talking about some of the issues that are going on right now. So again, I am for in Pangyo Techno Valley right now and Pangyo Techno Valley is leading innovation in Korea as well as Asia and attracting a lot of attention similar to that of the Silicon Valley of the United States. Um, we also have Jong Guansun of China and we are going to talk with them a little bit about what's going on over there, uh, what opportunities are there, what are the issues there. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that a little bit. We're going to be doing an online meetup venue once a month using the video conferencing program Zoom, uh, and this is in collaboration with uh, Pangyo Techno Valley TV, which is going to be on the Pangyo TV YouTube channel as well. And we're here to talk to also not just uh, learn about Korea, but also talk to foreign media to talk about the major issues and also learn about our differences and uh, just some interesting information about all these places around the world. Uh, so on June 29th, we actually talked about the issues in France along with Station F, uh, with the French startup media channel, Le Café du Geek. Uh, and today we're gonna be discussing issues in Zhongguansun in China with the Chinese media channel, Yes Guy. So thank you everyone for joining us. Very excited to be leading the meeting today. Before we go any further though, I would like to introduce you to our other main reporter here today, this is Chen Dongfan, the editor-in-chief of Yes Guy. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. This is Chen Dongfan from Yes Guy. I'm so great to be here. It's my big honor to talk to you uh, something about uh, Zhong Guansun. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I'm very much looking forward to learning about uh, not only you and your company, but also Chong Guansun, and just to see kind of what is over there and how things are going right now in Chong Guansun and in China in general. Before we start into the details of today, I would love to learn a little bit more about uh, you and about your company. Oh, can you tell us about the media channel Yes Guy? Yeah. Sure. Uh, yes, Sky was founded in 1999, uh, which is one of the earliest ICT online media in China. Uh, with the concept of uh, leading digital life, it provides high value daily news, reviews, industry reports, and not only articles, but also original videos. And we keep highly focused focusing on high-tech industry. Great, thank you so much. Oh, what, mm -hmm. I have a question. What is Yes Sky? What does the name Yes Sky mean? It's uh, about two words. Uh, uh, the, the front part is yes. Oh. <laughs> the yes, Y-E-S, and uh, the second word is sky. Uh, to the blue, so uh, it's um, two words become a two, one word. It's our logo for twenty more than twenty years. Wow, okay. that's <laughs> that's really interesting. Thank you so much for sharing that and telling us a little okay. bit about your company. Um, so I have I have one more question for you. You know, you're a company that is a media channel working with ICT. Do you have any particular interests? So what is your main interest in the ICT industry? What are you interested in? Uh, nowadays, I'm uh, highly interested in uh, AI and big data and cloud computing, uh, this area. And I focus on uh, the, uh, the transformation of uh, uh, in industry and culture. Great. Well, I'm very happy that you joined us. Thank you so much for coming 
here and uh, being a part of this monthly online meetup to talk with us. And I'm looking forward to what you have to say. Uh, so today, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about uh, one, Pongo Techno Valley and the current issues in Pongo Techno Valley. And we're also going to be talking about Zhongguansun in China, a little learning about that area and also learning about the issues that are there. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into right now a little bit of that. Um, if it's okay with you, I'll go ahead and start and do a little introduction about Pangyo right now. Is that okay? Okay, fine. Great. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen and we will get started. Okay. Great. So here we are. We are right now in Pangyo Techno Valley. So this is an advanced tech mecca for the Industry 4.0. There's a lot of tech companies, a lot of investment going on right now. It's a very exciting place to be. So I'm looking forward to sharing a little bit about that with you. Uh, so we'll talk about Pangyo First Techno Valley. We are in Pangyo First Techno Valley right now. Uh, a little bit about Pangyo Second Techno Valley, as well as some of the issues that are going on right now, some of the hot stories in this area, in ICT in Korea and in Pangyo Techno Valley. So first, a little introduction about Pangyo First Techno Valley. We are in Pangyo First Techno Valley, and the goals of it is to reinforce our uh, leading position as the first convergence innovative tech cluster in Korea and contribute to the one plus five digital city. The one plus five digital city has the one Pangyo Techno Valley in the middle. Um, go and we have kind of these five cities around us or five areas around us uh, that we work together with to help continue to grow the ICT industry in Korea, uh, including in the future Pangyo Techno Valley 2 and Pangyo Techno Valley 3. Uh, so the overall project has really begun, uh, really began before 2005, but we've been building up this area from 2005, 2015, and it continues to grow as we continue to see more development in this area. Uh, we are currently just south of uh, Seoul right now. We're about 20, 25 minutes away from Seoul by subway uh, in the Southern Pangyo district. Um, and uh, there's a lot going on with uh, housing, with the development of the, uh, of course, industry buildings around here with the research facilities. Uh, there's certainly a lot going on. Uh, this strength and strategy is kind of built around the people and the infrastructure here in Pangyo. So there are plenty of startups here, and that is the kind of driving force from the bottom up. There are startups, but there's also um, well-established companies that are here as well, working together in synergy to kind of improve not only the themselves, but also the entire ICT industry in Korea. Uh, there's also educational infrastructure uh, and uh, intel and uh, knowledge infrastructure in the sense of research and uh, learning facilities here. So it's a very exciting place to be working at, especially as a young startup company here in Korea. Now, currently, uh, most of the businesses that are here are IT companies of the companies here. Uh, a good 65. 65, 66% are IT companies, but we also have Culture Tech, BT, um, NT, and a couple of others. We have around 65,000 employees in this area, 23,000 researchers. Uh, and one of the things that we are trying to improve upon is, of course, increasing the um, kind of presence of uh, female population, both in employees as well as uh, leaders in the community. So there are currently 18,276 female employees in this area. One of the things that has been a source of pride for the area has been the improvement in total sales of the companies in Pangyo. Uh, you know, looking at this chart starting from 2014, we see continued growth year in, year out as we continue to uh, go past now the 107 trillion won. 
uh, range of about 100 billion US dollars going past that range in sales. So looking forward to what we can see in the future, but this has certainly been a positive growth for us. Now there are, as we mentioned, startup companies here in Korea, but we also have some big name companies that we're proud to uh, you know, be working alongside, be working with. Some of the big gaming companies you may have heard, Krafton, Nexon, uh, NC, some of the industry leaders, including Kakao, which is uh, started off, of course, just as a messaging platform, but has now expanded into content production, uh, into banking, also Africa TV, Anla, Pasco, ICT is out here. Um, and we have some other large companies you might recognize, uh, including companies under Samsung and companies under uh, SK as well. So with all these companies, as well as the public agencies that we have out here, including the Startup Center, which we are actually uh, kind of in right now, um, right next to anyway. Um, so with all of these, we have great infrastructure, not only for the small companies, but also the larger companies and a great way for them to work together. Now we have industry leaders, of course, in different sectors as well. The IT, that was the biggest part, uh, information technology where many of our companies are in. So that includes uh, POSCO, ICT, as well as Onlove, and uh, also Biotech, SK Chemicals, uh, Cha Medical Center is in the area as well. So there's a lot of great biotechnology companies out here, uh, clinics and places to, uh, to work and research at. And also culture technology is a big one. And that includes gaming, as we mentioned before, NCSoft, Nexon, um, NHN Entertainment is out here as well, including Kakao, which like I mentioned, has jumped into the entertainment world, uh, Kakao Story, Kakao Games, their own content. So that is something that uh, is a big part of the community here is of course the large companies and the big influence that they have on the community and especially the startups out here. Uh, so one of the things that we wanna do here in Pangyo and one of the reasons we have it is helping startups go global, making sure that they have the, the right push, maybe this, the right funding, the right financial support to go global. And that's one of the things that we're certainly working on uh, and trying to improve upon out here year after year. Uh, so this is a great place for startups in Korea to converge, to work together, but also then to get their products out to the world. Uh, and so that is one of our better achievements that we are continuing to work on every year. We also have great accelerator programs out here, uh, including Genova Asia's Global Accelerator Program and SOSA Korea Global Accelerator Program. These accelerator programs that are out here have done wonders for some of these startup companies out here, giving them places to work, helping them financially, helping them find uh, money from venture capitalists, from uh, other companies that are willing to invest in them. And so that is a big part of our community as well. Now, like I said, we are currently in Pangyo First Techno Valley, uh, but we are also looking towards Pangyo Second Techno Valley as well. So in cooperation with Pangyo First Techno Valley, uh, we're expecting Pangyo Second Techno Valley to be a global innovation cluster for the 4.0 uh, industry, the next industry as we continue on to fourth the fourth industrial revolution, uh, continuing, I should say. Um, and so the goals include innovating startup spaces, customizing office space for each step of the way for these businesses, starting in the startup phase. And then as they grow, customizing those office spaces. Um, but we're also have, we have the goal of increasing our global network and uh, increasing the communication and transportation within this area, helping companies to grow. So with the new Techno Valley, it'll increase not only the size of this area, but also increase the number of companies, employees, creative idea sharing, growth, global networking. Um, when we add this all together, this will be a big improvement to expand upon Techno Valley 1. So we have some expectations uh, with second Techno Valley, including more than 750 new companies, uh, and improving 
that number and continuing to get more and more companies, more and more employees who are tech savvy out here in the area. Um, and also looking forward to having more world-class innovation clusters, uh, especially focused on the creative economy. So with this, um, you know, improving on tech innovation, entrepreneurship, communication networking, and uh, creative talent, we're looking forward to seeing this new innovative technology, this innovative economy growing in Korea. Korea, as well as China, has always been, they've always been um, incredible innovators in technology, in, in kind of, you know, anything from semiconductors to phone production. Um, but one of the ways that Korea intends to lead in the future, of course, is with the innovative ecosystem, an innovative economy, a creative economy. Uh, and so by having Techno Valley 1, Techno Valley 2, and also the third Techno Valley, uh, it is something that we're looking forward to expanding on. Now, just my personal thoughts on the area. One of the reasons I like being here is it's a very clean place to be with new, the newest buildings, new technologies, as well as some great um, infrastructure being built, looking forward to some of the potential that it has, including perhaps using autonomous cars, a test bed for autonomous cars. Maybe we'll see autonomous taxis here in the future, um, a tramway, different ways that they are investing in. Um, kind of the infrastructure here is really exciting to be a part of. A few, um, like a month or two ago, we got to see a personless cafe, uh, and fully automated cafe with a robot making us coffee. These kind of technological startup hubs where you can see the newest technology in action really makes it an exciting place to work and why I'm very excited to always share a little bit about Pangyo Techno Valley with everyone around us. So that is kind of my presentation on Pangyo Techno Valley. Thank you. I hope you got a little bit out of it and you learned a little bit about um, this area as well. With that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and continue on and talk a little bit about what's going on in Panga Techno Valley, a lot of the issues that have been coming up, oh, excuse me there, um, and uh, a lot that we've been able to learn about as well. So before I get started, let me go ahead and get my information in front of me, and we will talk about uh, some of the exciting things that we were able to see. So give me one second here, I'll get started. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so let's go ahead and get started and talk a little bit about um, what we have here in front of us, some of the stories, some of the issues that are going on right now. So first up, we have the COVID vaccination stories, um, which we really, I've been really excited about here in Korea because these certificates are now available. So a little bit of background information uh, in Korea right now, we are currently vaccinating most of the population. We're at about 35% uh, of the population has gotten the first vaccination already. And uh, nearly 10%, I believe, have gotten the second vaccination shots. Um, so we're getting people mo more and more vaccinations. Uh, you can even get, uh, you can register for a vaccine if your age group is ready. And also, you can find leftover vaccines, which is a big part right now of um, me trying to get a vaccine in Korea because I haven't gotten one yet. I'm, the, I'm too young, but using cacao and Naver, you can do that. But the next step after getting your vaccine is the COVID-19 vaccination certificate available on Naver and Cacao Talk. And that was a big story this month. So in cooperation with the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency, Naver Cacao has decided to provide COVID-19 vaccination certifications uh, from July 12th. Users who have been vaccinated can verify their vaccination through Cacao Talk and Naver apps key pass or Korea internet pass QR check-in. So first in Cacao Talk, um, you can 
go online now and use their messaging platform, go through the consent process. Uh, and then now when you go someplace and you show your QR code to somebody, you're able to show that you have been vaccinated. And that allows, that will allow us in the future to tell who's been vaccinated, who has not been vaccinated. And maybe if you have the vaccination, you'll be able to do more things in Korea. Uh, for example, uh, one thing they're talking about is vaccinated people in the future will be able to take off their masks in public. Currently, we still have to wear masks, but in the future, as long as you have evidence, you have proof that you have the vaccination, you'll be able to do more and more things. And so Cacao Talk has, has added that certificate and Naver has also added that information. It includes the information about when you had your vaccination. So if anyone at restaurants or government officials can tell if you've had the vaccination and if you are fully vaccinated, which means two weeks after your final vaccination shot. Um, so that is one of the big news that came out this month. So the next story uh, is about LG. Uh, LG is in its third year. And uh, this is kind of exciting news because uh, Hu Kwang Mo joins hands with Kakao. And LG joins hands with Kakao by investing 100 billion won in Kakao Mobility. So 100 billion won or about 90 million US dollars has been invested in Kakao Mobility. So LG Group invested 100 billion won in Kakao Mobility, focusing on smart mobility businesses such as navigation and taxi services. And they're looking for new business opportunities. Um, its goal is to create a synergy effect between electric vehicles and autonomous vehicle related solutions such as the batteries and vehicle electronic equipment and smart mobility services. LG Corporation, the holding company of LG Group, announced this earlier this month that it had decided to invest 100 billion won in Kakao Mobility. In cooperation with Kakao Mobility, LG plans to secure battery driving data from its affiliate LG Energy Solution and explore new business opportunities in the future mobility sector, such as battery replacement and electric vehicle charging solutions. One LG official stated, through this investment, we're gonna increase our understanding of mobility platform customers and create synergy with Kakao Mobility. Kakao Mobility is developing and operating Kakao T, which is an integrated online offline linkage platform that provides a variety of transportation services from call taxis to parking, to designated drivers or surrogate driving and navigation for electric bikes. Kakao Mobility is focusing on the development of mobility services using electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles and is expanding the area of transportation platforms based on big data accumulated in service operation. So for the next story, very quickly, uh, we're gonna talk about NCSoft launching ESG management and forms a unique discourse on topics such as AI ethics. So perhaps you may be interested in this, and I'm sure in China, this is something that is talked about is AI ethics, you know, what is okay and what is not okay in the field of AI. So even in the gaming industry, ESG or environmental, social and governance management is becoming a hot topic. Starting from NCSoft, several game companies announced their commitment to ESG management, creating a new wave in the game industry running towards the 2 trillion won era, 20, excuse me, 20 trillion won era. NC established the NC Cultural Foundation in 2012 and has been engaged in social contribution activities since then. Now that has established the ESG Management Committee, it set up a diverse ways to implement social responsibility. NCSoft pointed out uh, consideration for future generations, support for the socially disadvantaged, and protection of environmental ecosystem as core areas for fueling the engine of sustainable growth. AI ethics was the most noticeable point brought up as NC recently showcased their AI framework series to improve leadership and ethics in the AI area on YouTube and blogs, drawing attention inside and outside the industry. The AI framework series is an annual project for leadership and ethics in the AI era, one of the core areas of NC's ESG management. And through discussions with world-renowned scholars from Harvard University, Stanford University, and MIT, new perspectives and directions for AI technology are being discussed. Next up, we have Nexon to start the next Disney in a, uh, initiative in earnest. 
Uh, this was interesting because uh, Chief Vice President Nick Van Dyke is expected to oversee global strategic planning, M&A, IP, and other areas right here. Uh, in particular, he's going to be overseeing the Nexon Film and Television, a uh, newly created division of the company focused on expanding the influence of Nexon's IP, uh, including Dungeon Fighter, Maple Story, and Cart Rider on the global stage. Uh, so, Chief Vice President Nick Van Dyke served as president of the Film and Television Division of Activision Blizzard Studios from 2014 to 2019, and also served 10 years at the Walt Disney Company as Senior Vice President of Corporate Strategy and Business Development. Uh, he had a key role in Disney's acquisition of Pixar, Marvel, and Lucasfilms, and uh, strategic planning all across Disney's businesses. In November, Nexon appointed Kevin Mayer, who served as Chief Strategy Officer of Walt Disney Corporation, to its independent uh, to its independent director. Kevin Mayer is a professional who helped Disney purchase um, this as well. So it's an exciting part of the Nexar uh, business strategy to see potentially this next Disney initiative take off using some of the key human resource talent. Uh, that some of these people with Disney uh, history in the Disney Corporation uh, can bring to Nexon. Next up, we're learning a little bit about uh, the Yongido Smart Mobility Demonstration Hub selected as MOIS's Outstanding Regional Balance New Deal Project. So Gyeonggi-do announced on July 15th that the Smart Mobility Demonstration Hub soon to open in Pangyo Second Techno Valley was selected as the Outstanding Regional Balance New Deal Project hosted by the Ministry of Interior and Safety, or MOIS, and they secured 3 billion won in special subsidies. The Outstanding Regional Balance New Deal Project contest was conducted to help promote early results of the Regional Balance New Deal by discovering outstanding cases that residents can appreciate and to increase the public's experience level to the Regional Balance New Deal. The contest began on March 24th and 15 projects were selected as finalists. The Smart Mobility Demonstration Hub project promoted by Gyeonggi-do is a project to build a five-story demonstration test bed for vehicles, robots, and drones based on autonomous driving technology as well as eco-friendly electric vehicle charging facilities in Pangyo Second Techno Valley. So this is what we talked about earlier with Pangyo Second Te Techno Valley really beginning to uh, completely develop and become a stronger addition to Pangyo First Techno Valley. Self-driving simulators, 3D location tracking systems, 5G communication and blocking facilities are installed here so that various demonstration tests based on autonomous driving can be conducted. It's also gonna foster smart mobility companies and support startups in the area. Uh, next, we had a quick story. I'll just me mention this briefly, is that Hanwha Aerospace started its aerospace business with solid performances. I am someone who is very interested in aerospace technology, um, especially with the recent news of, of you know, the, uh, the American billionaires going into space, whether it's Bezos or, uh, well, not all American, I should say, Elon Musk uh, as well. Um, We've seen some great innovation in this area in Korea as well. So Hanwha Aerospace, the intermediate holding company of Hanwha Group's defense industry and aviation is continuing its high growth, uh, improving every day as they continue their aerospace venture. Uh, Hanwha Aerospace is expected to record 1.3 trillion won in sales and 80 billion won in operating profits uh, in the second quarter of this year. They entered the aerospace industry by acquiring the satellite company Satrek Initiative, the only co company in Korea that can directly develop and manufacture key components related to satellites, such as satellite bodies, terrestrial systems, and electro-optic payloads. And last March, the group launched Space Hub, the control tower that brings together the group's space business capabilities. Kim Dong-Guan, the oldest son of Kim sung yeon CEO of Hanwha Group, is going to be leading the project. Very quickly, we're gonna be talking a little bit about Cacao now, becoming the primary partner of BOK for CBDC. So Cacao's blockchain technology affiliate GroundX is selected for Bank of Korea's primary negotiation partner, outstripping two competitors, 
uh, winning the bid for collaborating with the Bank of Korea's central bank digital currency simulation, the company will join the overall process of the simulation, which will cover the life cycle of CBDC, the central bank digital currency, including issuance, circulation, and redemption of CBDC, and services such as remittance and payment. Korea online e-procurement system announced on July 20th that the BOK selected Ground X for the primary negotiation partner for its CBDC simulation. And for our final big story, Craft On facing IPO to get an animated film of Battlegrounds from a Hollywood film producer whose films top the charts. So Craft On announced on the 21st that it's appointed Hollywood filmmaker Adi Shankar to film producer of its animated film of Battlegrounds, its biggest game product. Craft On said in a statement that Adi Shankar made various blockbuster films such as The Grey, Dread, Lone Survival for Survivor for the past 10 years in Hollywood. He's the youngest producer to top the box office in the U.S. and re recently produced a Netflix original series, Castlevania. Adi Shankar said, after Battlegrounds was released in 2017, I've roamed the Battle Battlegrounds end endlessly as a gamer. I have high expectations about joining the journey. So that's kind of the main stories that we wanted to talk about today from the Pangyo side of everything. Thank you for listening to not only the Pangyo introduction, the Pangyo Technic Valley introduction, but also some of the big stories that are here. Uh, and yeah, now that we've talked a little bit about that, I am looking forward to learning a little bit about Jong Gwang Soon and what you have to say about it as well. Um, so if you don't mind, um, that will end my part of the presentation. And now we can talk a little bit uh, more about what's happening in China, what's happening in your area. So again, thank you for listening. And uh, now it is time to learn a, bit, a little bit about Dong Guan Sun. Uh, I believe we have a little bit from Dong Fan, Chen Dong Fan, who is the editor in chief of Yes Sky. She's prepared her own presentation for us. So, Dong Fan, can you go ahead and introduce a little bit about your area to us? Uh, share your screen with us and show us what you've prepared for us today. Okay, thank you. The topic of my speech today is about Jun Guan Chun, uh, high tech Jun. Uh, you know, in uh, the early 1980s, after the first private technology enterprise in mainland China was built up in a small warehouse in Jun Guan Chun. And there are more and more people in high tech industry began talking about that. Could Jun Guan Chun become the next Silicon Valley? Uh, but today, there are two, uh, there are 22 southern high tech enterprises uh, creating more than 300 international standards and setting up more than 1,000 overseas R&D centers and branches. Zhongguancun people loudly announced that they want to be Zhongguancun uh, and the only one unique one in the world. Uh, so in the past 40 years, Zhong Guanchun evolved from uh, electronic street into national independent innovation demonstration room from the transfer station of new technology into the source of innovation. Uh, and Zhong Guanchun has not only created ma many first and foremost in the in the history of China, uh, scientists, scientific and technological uh, innovation, but also it's become a global innovation highlight. Uh, so, okay. Um, the Chinese President Xi Jinping said, looking to the future, Future, Zhong Guanchun should increase its innovation development, uh, accelerate its match to a globally influential science and technology innovation center, and lead China, China innovation. I'm sorry. And lead China inno, innovation driving development. Is uh, Zhong Guanchun's goal and vision. 
uh, and here, this page is an overview uh, of uh, in 1989, Zhongguan Tun, Wenchu Street was just a 2,020 meter long street dominated by bookstores. And by 2014, Zhongguan Tun, Wenchu Street had transformed into a innovation and entrepreneurship street and the first one in China with the theme of innovation and entrepreneurship creating new all industry around our chain and all factor innovation and entrepreneurship services. And from a two, from uh, 2014 to 2020, Zhongguan Sun Wancho Street has incubated uh, 3,841 uh, startup terms, uh, 436 foreign and uh, returning team term teams and attracted uh, a total of one uh, one thousand and two hundred and twelve uh, financing institutions with a total financing amount of uh, of uh, seventeen seven billion yuan. Uh, from January to uh, April 2021, and the total uh, revenue of medium and large uh, high tech enterprises in Zhongguan Tun that nutrition June was uh, 2,334 point nine billion yuan. Uh, a cre increase of uh, 37 uh, percent over the previous year. So of which uh, technological innovation brought revenue of uh, 451 billion yuan is an increase of uh, 38 uh, uh, percent at the May, uh, at of May, uh, twenty twenty one, uh, there were two thousand forty three listed uh, companies in Zhongguan Chen, uh, the highest uh, density among all major cities in China. So, um, the next page is. Uh, the focus on industry. Uh, there are um, ma major five industry. Uh, from January to April 2021, Zhongguan Tun focused on uh, bioengineering, uh, smart manufacturing, new energy, uh, environmental protection, AI, and other fields uh, at present. Zhongguan Tun Enterprises have uh, 672,000 uh, relevant R&D personnel, and the R&D cost is 106 uh, billion yuan, an uh, increase of 37% over our last year. Uh, the advantage one is um, the concentration of famous university, you know, and talent gathering. Uh, at present, Zhongguan Sun established uh, 45 business parts with uh, 40,000 overseas talents, attracts more than 6,000 overseas talents to start enterprises and introduced 
uh, 20% of the number of Thailands in China. Zhongguo has uh, 38 technology transfer centers of uh, universities and uh, contract amount of realized technology transformation uh, accounts for uh, for to 25 percent of the country uh, ranking first in China. And the uh, advantage too uh, is intensive business uh, incubation and investment institutions. Uh, Jingguangchun demonstration Zhu has more than 500 incubation institutions and more than 1,000 uh, investment institutions, uh, accounting for more than uh, three of the uh, number in China. Uh, Zhongguangchun cooperate with uh, 253 large enterprises, uh, 266 universities and 378 investment institutions to provide startups with talent, technology research and uh, development, inspe inspection and testing, and capital services. And the famous company here is uh, uh, Lavano, Baidu, Xiaomi, Jingdong, uh, Douyin, uh, you know, TikTok. And the policy support uh, in order to attract Thailand to start their own business, Zhong Guan has launched uh, has launched uh, 17 measures. Teams come from overseas to start their own business in Zhongguancun within three years can apply for relevant funds, even if they are not in China temporarily. And in addition, Zhongguancun also provides legal risk checking uh, services for Thailand and pro provides early warning of intellectual uh, property rights. And here the planning is expectation. Uh, three years plan released, plan to uh, cultivate 100 billion scale enterprises. Uh, the Zhongguancun three-year plan by 2020, 2023, Zhongguancun will build a number of new digital infra infrastructures, achieve technological leadership in digital fields, breakthroughs in key core technologies and cultivate global competitive high-tech enterprises with a scale of 100 billion. And by June 2021, Zhongguancun has uh, completed 2,109 investment in conjunction with three uh, with 30 investment institutions with an uh, investment amount of uh, 715.343 billion. Among them, the number of investments in enterprise services projects is 520 three with an uh, investment amount of 141 uh, 51.2 uh, 
uh, 9 RMB uh, RMB billion uh, followed by uh, healthcare, smart manufacturing, finance, local life, e-commerce, blockchain, artificial intelligence, smart hardware, intelligent transformation, transportation, online education, and other fields. Here are the current Zhongguan Chun news I want to share with you. Uh, 2020, tw uh, 2021 Zhongguan Chun Forum uh, will be held in Beijing from September uh, 24th to uh, 28th with the theme of smart, healthy, carbon neutral, adding cut, cutting edge com competition and supporting activities to the form meeting. Technology transactions, exhibitions, and result releases. The form uh, invites global scientists, famous research and academic institutions, in international organizations, and global entrepreneurs to uh, exchange views on topics such as digital economy, life and health, and clean energy. Here is another news. Uh, on July on July 22, 2021, Zhong Guan Chun U30 Youth Entrepreneurship Exhibition was held in Beijing and which is open to entrepreneurs under 35 years old and has been held for six years, attracting nearly uh, 5,000 entrepreneurs to participate. This winner will have the opportunity to uh, participate in, in the China Youth Innovation and Entrepreneurship Competition. At the same, uh, in, in intelligent robots, AR products, chips, food technology, and other products were presented focus on the achievement of youth entrepreneurship. Uh, and uh, the other news, on the July 2020s, uh, the fourth Zhongguan Chun Thailand and Innovation Competition was held in Zhongguan Chun. And the high performance uh, bionic SAU future of uh, University of Electronic Science and Technology and the project of Northeastern University won the first prize. And according to the statistics, the total valuation of 40, uh, six, 64 projects in the semifinals reaches Two point six billion yuan. The talent and the innovation competition has covered more than two hundred universities nationwide and attracted more than three million students to start their own business. And uh, here is my presentation. And thanks. Thank you so much for sharing. That was really interesting. Um, it's really yeah. interesting to hear about the news as well, yeah. about the different competitions that you have, like the Zhongguang uh, Sun U30 competition, as well as the talent and innovation competition, uh, and to see the opportunities for young entrepreneurs. Uh, it's really exciting. So again, thank you so much for sharing that information with us. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, so I guess that's that's about wraps it up for today. 
Um, we got to share some of the issues that we're seeing in Pangyo and Zhongguansun high tech zone in China. Um, really two areas that are leading in innovation in Asia as well as the world. Uh, and I do wanna say thank you so much to the editor in chief of YesGuy, uh, Chen Tongfang of the Zhongguansun high tech zone in China. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, it's my big honor to be here and thank you for hosting me. Absolutely, it's our pleasure too to have you as well. So we really appreciate it and uh, hopefully looking forward to seeing you again in the future. Uh, so this is the end of the 2021 Pangeo monthly meetup for July. It's online, of course, we're interacting with people from around the world today from Zhongguangsu in China. Uh, we got to speak with Chen Dongfang, the editor-in-chief of Yes Guy. We got to talk with someone from France last month. Uh, and next month, we will be back to uh, continue uh, our journey. We'll be on August 24th. That's a Tuesday. We'll be doing an online meetup uh, and about the Silicon Valley in the United States, talking with someone from there. So we're looking forward to that. And we're looking forward to seeing you then. Again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, my name is Alex Sigurist here. And for Pangio Techno Valley TV, I just want to say thank you. And we're looking forward to seeing you again. All right, goodbye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Bye.